But you know, uh, they say if you're sick, you start sick. If you're broke, you start broke. If you're poor, you start poor. What you do, you just start. So that's what I did. I just started. Uh, I started my first restaurant, which is uh, Kitchen Queen. When I started the Kitchen Queen, I, I could not even afford charcoal. You know, we think charcoal is for those who can't afford gas. Now imagine you can't afford charcoal. And I had to go below charcoal and I was using sawdust to cook. Gugi, yeah, I am. Uh, I am 39 years. Uh, mother to six uh, amazing humans, uh, and to many, many other uh, children. Uh, I have uh, biologically, I have six of my own. Yeah, but I also have uh, my brother's daughter, brother-in-law's daughters. Yeah, I, I have other children. Who are, who are also with me. And uh, tens of uh, others who are in children's homes, uh, yeah, who are, who, are, who are directly my, yeah, they will call me mom. I have five children's home that uh, I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, my, my foster mother who raised me used to cook at home. And uh, she used to make a lot of different kinds of foods. Bajia, samosa, mahamri, maragwe, nazi, chapati. Eh? There's what uh, in, our, in our culture is called gurusa, all those. And if you'd come at 10, 11 a.m. it would be sold out. Oh. And uh, yeah, at that time I was, in, I was in primary school. I used to, I saw so automatically, uh, I was the only uh, young girl at home. So I used to, rush home after school every day to go and help her prepare. You know, chop onions for the, for the samosa, grind the meat, karanga eat, kandonga, mahamri, all those things. I, like, I used to work like a donkey. Actually, I was not allowed to do homework at home they, they, because, uh, yeah, she, she, she was very categorical. Kazi ya shule ni ya shule, kazi ya nyumbani ni ya nyumbani. Yeah, so I, I got, I got to work at a very young age. I was doing a lot of things. So I think that is how my passion with food uh, and, 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 you know, started. Yeah. So that's, that's one of my businesses right now. I, I own two restaurants, Signature Restaurant uh, and uh, Kitchen Queen Restaurant. I, I have an outside catering kitchen as well, uh, where I cater for corporate, uh, corporates like Safaricom. Um, I do most of their anything that they're not doing in a hotel in Mombasa, any function that they are hosting outside uh, the beach hotels or anything, it will be food gourmet hosting. Yeah, and uh, so many other corporates here, KPA, James Finlay, so, and so on and so forth, yeah. So that's what I do. Uh, and I like what I do, I love it actually. Because I think I have grown right in it from childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a childhood love or passion that uh, grew into a business, into a money making event. Well, uh, you know something funny. You know, when you, as a child, when I did what I was doing, I was not very happy or excited about it. I just mm -hmm. thought I was doing child labor here. In fact, <laughs> When, when, when other kids are playing outside, I was playing with Sambusa, I was playing with Sambusa, I was playing with Mahamri. Nakata. You know, it, it just used to feel torturous. I didn't enjoy it, honestly. Ah. Yeah, but uh, years later into my adulthood, I'm married. Um, I, because I was a house, housewife at first, uh, got, got my children up to, up to the fourth child then I realized now I want to go out and do something. And I was wondering, uh, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Because uh, I, I, I didn't go to college. 
So I had no college degree to take nowhere. So I, I knew I could only have employed myself. That's the only way I could, that's the only thing I could do. Okay. And interestingly, uh, while I was thinking what I would do, I decided to do a fashion, a boutique, you know, open a boutique, stock a lot of handbags, shoes, clothes, and all those good stuff that women like. <laughs> and I really struggled with that business. I struggled, struggled with that business so badly. And, you know, just in the course of my frustrations, uh, people who knew me, people who would come to my home, they all used to ask me, but Zara, seriously, you mean you do not know, you do not know what business you should do? And I was like, seriously, I, I think I know what I should do is fashion. And they're like, why don't you, why don't you do hospitality? You are the most hospitable person, you know, because I think my home every weekend, there was a party. <laughs> All my, all my husband's friends used to eat in my house because I would cook, I would host them, I would, you know, and, and they used to find my hosting skills so exceptional. They're like, you do it with so much ease, you make variety of food, you make delicious food, uh, you know, it's like you're literally doing nothing, you know. So they were like, uh-uh, this, uh-uh. So can you imagine, people told me that for a few years before I could see what they're saying. <laughs> yeah but eventually when uh, i had enough of fashion and uh, i just put up everything for sale one day i woke up one morning put a 50 percent sale on the boutique yeah sold did 75 up to near 100 percent discount i recovered the money i could recover which was very little by the way you'd be surprised and uh i started a new journey Turned the same boutique to a restaurant. How long have you been into the hospitality business, into the food business, and uh, what kind of challenges have you faced? Well, I've been in this business now for about eight years. Mm -hmm. This is my eighth year. Wow. Uh, since, since I opened the first restaurant. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, as with most businesses, uh, when I first started, the challenges was financial. I, had, I didn't have the required capital. I didn't qualify for a loan, per se. Yeah, but uh, luckily I had a small account that I was operating when I was doing the, the, the boutique. So the much I could get from the bank as loan, I only qualified for about 630,000 which was far way below what I needed. But you know, uh, they say, if you're sick, you start sick. If you're broke, you start broke. If you're poor, you start poor. What you do, you just start. So that's what I did. I just started. Uh, I started my first restaurant, which is uh, Kitchen Queen. When I started the Kitchen Queen, I, I could not even afford charcoal. You know, we think charcoal is for those who can't afford gas. Now imagine you can't afford charcoal and I had to go below charcoal and I was using sawdust to cook. Yeah. So I started, I started, uh, I got the 630,000 from equity, uh, tried to fix the kitchen and get, and get furniture and do this. And like that money was unsplitable. You just don't know what to do and what, yeah. So I just did a bit of everything. And I remember I had 30,000 left to buy stock and start. And that time I don't even have a fridge. I don't even have, yeah. I could not afford to paint the, the, the bill, the whatever inside of the restaurant. Yeah, but uh, I started it as it was and uh, started off cooking with sawdust. Yeah, but one thing I knew when food is right, people will come. Yeah, so I, I, my focus, my key focus was on making sure our food was tasty and well presented. And uh, I think from, from the very first day we opened the restaurant, I, I, I would get compliments from people like, hey, because I, I tried to buy some beautiful oval plates, then I would portion the food, put them nicely. You know, not there you go to those, Kibandaski, uh, you know, everything sitting on top of the other. Yeah, I would, would, you know, would put our simmer nicely, mold it, put it nicely, put the boga, put the nyama, you know, so people Sahani, they're impressed, like, hey, all right, I didn't expect this. So yeah, uh, and we started, started growing. I was, I was the chef, I was the cashier, I was, 
I was running around like a headless chicken, I tell you. I was everywhere doing everything. Yeah, but uh, thank God for small beginnings. I, I got to learn my business. I got to understand it. Uh, I took it from there to, till we could now afford charcoal, till we could now uh, move from charcoal to gas, till we could now close down and renovate and do a proper kitchen and do proper sitting area and put Wi-Fi and do whatnot. Yeah, those, those growth came in stages. Uh, till I did another branch, uh, uh, second branch. Yeah, and I thank God today. Today I look back and I'm like, ooh, I, it, 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 it had seemed so impossible because the, the, the challenge of not having capital is, is at times might seem insurmountable. Yeah, but I also realized uh, building uh, bottom up is really, is, is really, really also a good idea. You, in the process, you get to learn the business, to understand it. Today, I can, I can operate the business without being there even for a whole week because I understand it inside out. Yeah. So those were my challenges. My, chance, my challenges was, was financial. Uh, but the, the, the key challenge that I faced at that time was basically getting enough finances to do what I knew I needed to do. Your challenge is money. Uh, overcoming it can only mean you get money. So you either uh, get money from whichever source you know, or you generate money from the business. And you see, for me, I had no any other source to get money from. I had to generate it from the business. So that means your 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 spending has to be very disciplined. Your you know. You have to be very uh, deliberate and serious about what you're doing. So I put measures in place, uh, gave myself targets, uh, do this here, do that there. I remember one time I even I, I had to borrow money from a friend. Uh, yeah, and you know, you, you give they give you they give you cash, you give them a post dated check. And you have to be very sure you check by the time you go to the bank, there'll be money. Yeah, so um, I, I, I raised, I generated capital from within, uh, little by little. Our milestones, we, we, we did one thing at a time. I could not, everything that I did, I could not do it at a go. But yeah, of course, we, we, we came to the place now where I could actually close the restaurant for two months to renovate. Now I could afford it. But before I got there, I had to generate money from within the business, take care of my expenditures, be very deliberate about uh, what needs to be done that is important, prioritize, yeah, and allow the business to grow, the client base to increase. And uh, I think we were, I would say we were successful. Let me tell you uh, one thing, and uh, I, think, I think that's where your, your line caught me uh, when you talked about mentorship. Uh, I'm, I'm one person who believes in mentorship because, uh, you know, they say success leaves clues. And uh, you do not need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, yeah, you can, you can stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before you and you'll be fine. Of course, it does not mean that we copy and replicate what somebody did, but with the insight and foresight that you get from people who've gone before you, you are able to probably come up with something better and unique instead of going through all the pitfalls that they went through. So mentorship is very important. Personally, I'm, I'm a big believer in that. And uh, I, I mentor quite a few youths with me. Uh, actually, I think, most of my employees are, are very young people. I, 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 have, I have old staff, but also have young, young people. Who, others that I just picked from the street, from the, yeah. And you, you know, you mentor them and teach them how it should be done, how you should be appearing, how you should, yeah. And uh, it's a good thing. So personally, what I did not realize, as I told you earlier, my first time mom used to cook at home. That was a mentorship of its own kind because I learned, to, I started, my first uh, uh, set of skills that I acquired were directly from her. And she was a great cook. 
she used to cook for the Mau Mau's in the in Gom Forest. Those days, uh, those days before independence. So she was she was a renowned cook. She was known. Her food was she was a sucker for quality. If she makes her samosas, the you know the people make samosa, uh, they, they put a lot of onions and little meat. Ah, ah, ah. She never used to play those jokes. When when you're doing her stuff because you're doing things under her instru instructions, her ratios should be very clear about them. You know how much you put where. She she was she was she used to do good quality food, and that is why if you came if you if you came to our home at around 10, 11 a.m., you'd find nothing. Everything has been bought, and she made she made significant money and built houses around her and bought clothes and was just cooking from home. She didn't even have a hotel somewhere. So you see, that was mentorship in its own way. But of course, I had to, I have to, I had to level it up from there. Yeah. And uh, we are so blessed. Uh, we, we live in, in an era where knowledge is everywhere. The internet has brought us so much information. And uh, I remember my, my enthusiasm with food back then, even when I was a housewife. I would, I would watch, there was a channel called BBC Food on, uh, on DSTV. You'd find me on BBC Food the entire time. And every day I had a new recipe I'm trying. And I am doing this and I'm perfecting that. And I, yeah, and that is why everybody would come to my home and they were so happy because all the time I am cooking. I, let me tell you, I never used to like cooking ordinary food. I, I wanted to try these exotic menus, you know? And boy, did I cook. Yeah, so that's, that's how I, I got to learn about Gordon Ramsay. I got to learn about all these uh, Michelin uh, chefs, you know, and uh, Thomas Keller and all these big chefs. And I began to follow them. Yeah, and learn. You know, at times mentorship might be one-on-one, -on -one, but also mentorship may just be following somebody and seeing what they're doing. And all, all their programs, I was in there. All their, yeah, I was in there. And I, I, improved, I improved my cooking a lot by just learning online different recipes. What is needed for this recipe? What is the deal breaker for this recipe? What can enhance it? All those things. I learned, and I learned all that while I was a housewife before I even knew I wanted to do a restaurant. Yeah, so uh, when, when, when it was time to do a uh, restaurant, I didn't, I didn't have anybody who I knew was doing restaurant who could hold my hand. So I dived in and yeah, it, it paid in the end. But uh, yeah, at first there was so much that I didn't know that I got to learn on the job. So uh one thing i know anytime any day whichever whatever business you're doing having good interpersonal skills when it comes to effective communication you know uh being being able to communicate be it with your customers uh be it with the government because when you're in business trust you me uh carrier will knock on your door uh the 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 uh, county all these people, you, you know me, they used to come and I used to feel like running away. I, I just didn't think I could face them or talk to them. Or, and you know, when you're sitting in business, you don't even have an accountant. You do that. You, you're doing everything. So you, you talk to everyone from the, from, the, from the authority that knocks at your door to the customer that comes, that who is satisfied, the one who is dissatisfied, the one who is fussy, the one who has come with his own nasira from wherever he's come from. You know, it's, 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 such, a, it's such a tough thing. So I always say, if there's something that I, that I learn it makes a very big difference is learning effective communication. And uh, I think that is one of the things that all the time I am having, uh, even with my, with my staff right now, that's the one thing I'm always telling them. Can you people learn to communicate very effectively in a manner that you understand each other? Can you make an effort, check the concern to ensure that the other party understands what you're telling them? Uh, you know, let your body language be right. Let your words be right. Because you know, at times you might tell somebody something meaning well, but your body language is so off that, you know, yeah. So all those, for me, I think communication is a deal breaker. 
poor communication is a deal breaker in any, in any setup. So uh, effective communication cannot be overemphasized. It is important as important gets. Very, very important. And also dealing with criticism, it's, it's, it's also a very important aspect of business. Because let me tell you, there's no way you get criticized like in business. Compe you know, you have competitors, you have uh, genuine, mis genuine, you know, that, that needs to be fixed. You have people who are probably just in a bad mood and they landed it in your hands. <laughs> you, have, you have to be very gracious to all of them eh? and make them all uh, feel very comfortable uh, just by how you communicate with them. At, at times, you normally see such a small thing that would have been handled so easily just because of poor and ineffective communication snowballs into something so big. Yeah, and it does not amuse me all the time. I see people fail just because they cannot communicate properly and a customer has to, you know, call the supervisor, call the manager, call the owner, call, you know, and the, the call is going on and on or until you get a very bad review on Google because somebody just didn't handle something so tiny. You know, nowadays you're reviewed by people you don't even know. In fact, uh, I was, uh, the other day we had a meeting with my staff and I was telling them, nowadays, I, I just look at our Google reviews because everybody who works in here, in a day, you'll not miss five reviews. So it's very easy to tell what is the norm. Are we doing well? Are we not doing well? So, yeah. Uh, assuming you're not doing what you're doing right now and you are given an option to be employed or to start a business, which one would you choose and why? Well, I think I'd still choose business. <laughs> yeah, uh, business is, is, not, is not the funkiest of places to be. But I think by virtue of what I have seen so far, I think it's a good place to be also. Uh, because uh, you can determine a lot of things. Well, there are those things that are beyond you. There's also a good, a good number of things that you can determine, especially if you're focused and have a vision. Yeah, you can, you can push yourself to do things and, 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 and grow. Uh, employment is not a bad thing, again. I'm not, I, I don't think there's one better than the other. It's, it's just for me. I think I, I love the idea of uh, having my time for myself that I can tell you today we are doing a meeting at three and I'll, I'll, I'll stop every other thing and tell them uh, you're going to wait. Uh, you know, I, I could not have done that if I needed to be working somewhere. Yeah, but I think for me business any day. Peace, love and unity. And I, and I have to choose one. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> hey. That's a tough one. But I'd go for peace. I'd, I'd, I'd go for peace because I think anyone needs peace. I, I don't think there's anything you could have that will negate the importance of peace in anyone's life. So if, if, the, if, if you can only pick one, then I, I'd rather be peaceful. Yeah? But I also believe if you have peace, uh, yeah, the rest can also come. You realize we, we, we can, for as long as you, you do something with consistency and you're keen on, on, on delivering, growth is bound to happen. And with growth comes money. Such that you, 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 are, you are not just uh, doing the business that every other person. I, I don't know if you're my friend on Facebook. The, the, yesterday, there's something I shared on Facebook of, of, of this tuk tuk person who's, who's taken his tuk tuk to a whole new level. He's put a carpet, he's put a screen, he's put serviettes air freshener, you know, can you yeah. imagine, if, uh, because I've ever bought that tuk-tuk once, and you know, I was like, for real, this guy, and I didn't think of taking photos, so yesterday somebody bought it, and, and put it on social media, and I was like, this is the thing, it doesn't matter how many people are doing the same thing, it, it is, you bring your energy to the, to your business, if, 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 and if you're, and if you're in the positive uh, energy business, yeah, your business just radiates. It's just different because you, what you want is to please 
You want people to find your service pleasing. You want them to find your goods acceptable. And you apply yourself to it. At, at, times, at times I sit uh, and, and, and look at my journey. Uh, I always say I am, I am still very far from where I believe uh, I should, I want to go. But uh, if, if I may just say from my experience, from where I, I'm coming from, from starting at Kibandaski, who could so dust, you know, just do all these things that are very basic level, building it up. Uh, one thing I realized, um, start, start now. You know, I, people procrastinate a lot. People always wait for all situations and all conditions to align, to be ideal, to do anything. Such, we hardly have such times. There's no one single time that you feel you are now ready to do everything or to do something. At any one time, you're bound to feel like you're inadequate in, a, in, in something or in an area or insufficient or, or even just have a low self opinion about your own abilities. Yeah, but if there's one thing I always like to tell people, start as you are, where you are, with what you have, however you are. Like I told you when I started, if you're sick, you start sick. If you're broke, you start broke. Start as you are and allow yourself to build up because you'll understand your business so much better when you start small and build up. Uh, as opposed to the amount of risk at times there is when you're starting a big business with a lot of capital. People have gone to banks and taken two, three millions, going to start business and it all goes down. Yeah, and there's somebody else who started business probably with, with 30,000 shillings, 50,000 shillings or 100,000 shillings, and they've grown it up to be multi. Yeah. Yeah, so um, there's always opportunity. You just have to be, you, you just have to want to start. You have to believe in yourself. And you just have to believe you can do it because our mindset is equally important. You cannot, you cannot self, you cannot uh, second guess yourself, doubt yourself and expect yourself to produce. So I think at times learning to be your own cheerleader, learning to, you know, this is what uh, Barack Obama calls the audacity of hope. Things might look so grim, but you're audacious enough to hope that today I can start cooking with this sawdust. Tomorrow I'm going to be cooking in gas. In a, in a, in a, in a, yeah, that is audacity. The audacity of hope. So I always say, if, 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 if we kick out fear and agree to just start as you are and believe in yourself, keep hope alive, believe you me. There's nothing that is not doable. There is nothing that is impossible. Yeah, I'm in social media. I mean, yeah, I think I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm, I'm on all the social handles. If you type Zara Bote, you'll find me all over.